What's up everyone and welcome to a Minecraft tutorial video. I'm your host, Omledu, and today I'll be showing you how to survive your very first day in Minecraft. This tutorial is for those of you who have never played Minecraft before. I'm going to try to keep it as simple as I possibly can. So after clicking Create New World, you will be led to this screen right here. Start off by naming your world anything you desire. Then make sure your default game mode is on Survival. If it's on Creative, the main difference is that it will disable achievements or trophies on that world permanently. So, make sure that if you want a survival mode, it stays on survival. A lot of people have two worlds, one survival and one creative. But also, I, I will say, if you're having trouble with the controls, or you just want to spend some time learning the controls, you might start off in creative and just spend five to ten minutes running around in a circle. Remember that you can find all of the controls in the menu no matter what platform you're on, and so once you're confident in your controls, it's time to look at the difficulty. So now you want to work your way up to hard. Hard has special bonuses and things like that, but for all intents and purposes, we're just going to start off on normal. And you can just ignore everything else in this menu. All of that other stuff either doesn't matter or can be changed later. We'll be going over that stuff at the end of the video. But for now, you have spawned in your very first Minecraft world. Congratulations! From the time that you spawn into the world, you will have five minutes before nightfall. Minecraft has five minutes of daytime and five minutes of nighttime. You can kind of tell what time it is by looking at the sun or the moon. It will be slowly creeping in one direction or another, so right now it's slowly creeping up, so it's morning time. That means we still have about five minutes before nightfall. Monsters will start spawning in darkness, so we need to collect the three things you need to survive before that time. The first of these three things is wood. Most Minecraft experiences start off by punching trees, so this is no different. Be sure to collect like 7 to 10 logs before nightfall hits. The more you can collect, the better, because it's hard to do this at night with monsters all around you. At least until you can build some light. Monsters don't like light and will not spawn in areas that you have lit up. The more area you light up, the safer the game will be and the more time you can spend at night messing around. But before we talk about light, we need to talk about food. So after you gather some wood, be sure to keep an eye out for animals. You need to make sure to collect as much raw meat as you possibly can before nightfall. Try not to eat any of the raw meat. It won't hurt you, but it won't fill up your hunger bar as quickly as cooked meat. I'll show you how to cook the meat here in a minute, but also keep in mind that not all animals have any edible meat. Things like llamas and horses won't give you any edible meat. It's mainly like chickens, pigs, cows, and sheep. Be sure to kill all of those, and if you manage to get three sheep of the same color and get three wool of the same color, you'll be able to craft a bed. A bed will just let you skip nighttime altogether. But you can't always rely on finding sheep, so more on beds later on in the video. Let's get back to the things you can rely on. We talked about wood, we talked about food, now let's talk about how to cook that food and get light. The final thing you need on your first day is coal. This is what coal looks like. When you find it, pull up your inventory or your crafting menu. It'll either look like this or it'll look like this. To flip flop back and forth, click these icons at the top right. The first thing we need to build is a crafting table, which is made out of four planks of any kind. So we need to get four planks. So, don't spend too much time exploring this crafting menu. You know, you can do this at night, you know, but during the day, you just need to do this as quickly as possible. But I'm going to kind of break things down. Um, so, you can either search for the item you're trying to craft. So, search for planks here. Or, especially if you don't like this little sidebar thing and you want it to look like this, you can just simply drag the log into this little 2x2 two two and pull out the planks. Um, super duper easy several different ways you can do it. Either way, get you some planks, uh, save at least four logs, and now we're going to make a crafting table. So put four planks in those squares to get your crafting table, or you can always pull the crafting table out of this crafting menu. It's really just up to you, whichever one you prefer. 
Either way, if you click on the, the crafting table in this crafting menu, it will fill up the pattern for you, so you don't have to put the planks in there. Um, but once you get your crafting table, exit out and place it down. Then click on it. When you click on it, it will pop up with even more stuff for you to craft. This is where most of your complex crafting is done. But for now, we just need a wooden pickaxe. So get yourself some sticks, and that should unlock a wooden pickaxe. It is three planks and two sticks in this pattern here. And once you get yourself your wooden pickaxe, you are now ready to mine the stone. Pickaxes are what you need to use to mine stone stuff. Coal is the main thing that you'll need to cook your food and to light up your area. That's cause when you get coal, it will unlock your ability to make torches. Torches provide light to keep the monsters at bay. Now, for your very first night, don't spend all your coal on torches. There's something else you're going to need your coal for. So be sure to collect as much coal as you can before the very first night. But those are the three things you need. You need wood, food, and coal. And don't forget to bring your crafting table with you. You can break it with any object, just don't break it with your pickaxe. Only use your pickaxe on stone. Don't use it on grass or wood. It's just as fast as using your hands or using a random item, except your pickaxe will take a lot of damage if you use it on non-stone related things. But now the sun is starting to go down. Always keep an eye on the sun. It sets pretty quickly if you're not paying attention. So when it starts getting really low, find somewhere to like dig in the side of a hill or a mountain. You can always dig straight down and place a block above the hole that you entered. But it's nice if you can find a nice little side entrance like this. Once you dig in, place some blocks to, to block the entrance. This ensures that, that monsters cannot get in. Now, if you block the top one too, it'll get dark all of a sudden. But that's what these torches are for. Now you can see. If you don't block that top one though, there are little tiny monsters that can come in and get you. But just be sure to block your entrance before the sun actually sets. And now you can spend some time kind of expanding out a little area. This will be your, your, your first bedroom in your Minecraft world. Now you can place down your crafting table and explore even more. Now a campfire is the way to go to cook your meat on the very first day. You need three logs, one piece of coal, and three sticks. So as long as you brought four logs with you, you'll be able to make a campfire. Just gotta turn one of the logs into planks and then those planks into sticks and you'll have your campfire ready to go. Now your campfire will be pretty smoky. So it's nice to, to just kind of set it off to one side so it doesn't kind of get in the way. It does have this nice little crackly noise. It sounds very homely. But once you have it placed down, you can take your raw meat and simply click on the campfire. It'll place the raw meat on one of the four corners. I'll try to move around so you can kind of see see that it's placing them there and after a little bit of time they will pop off fully cooked so you just gotta wait and they will eventually pop off for you and there you go now you have cooked meat cooked meat is way better than raw meat in fact cooked meat is one of the best foods in the entire game and it's accessible right off the bat and it doesn't require any fuel to cook super duper nice so if you're ever low on hearts and your food bar isn't full your hearts won't recover you need a full food bar in order to recover your hearts so that's where eating food comes in now the better your food the less you'll have to eat the more little meat sticks it gives you and the higher its saturation which is a hidden number that you don't really need to know about just know that the better food you eat, the less of it you'll have to eat. Now at night, don't go outside. You can, but it's dangerous out there. Instead, just kind of dig. You know, look for iron, look for gold, look for diamonds. You never know. But inevitably, you'll want to go down. 
The farther down you go, the higher chance you'll have of finding cool stuff, but your wooden pickaxe won't take you very far. Luckily though, after digging your hole, you should be able to make a stone pickaxe. The stone tools are way better than the wooden tools. To be honest, you should never make any wooden tools other than your very first wooden pickaxe in order to get stone to make your stone pickaxe. Stone pickaxes and stone tools are, are faster and they last longer. Now of course, they're nowhere near as good as like iron tools or as diamond tools or nowadays netherite tools even but look how much faster this stone pick is from the wooden that's really nice you can actually start getting somewhere with the stone tools but don't get ahead of yourself even if you have a stone sword if you don't have iron armor you're still pretty squishy at night it's still really dangerous you can get trapped where you can't get back in your house and you might think you can win but you die and that's okay dying is inevitable in this game basically especially on your first few days until you really get the hang of things if you die though you'll respawn back where you initially spawned into the world You'll also have five minutes to collect the stuff you had in your inventory whenever you died. It takes items five minutes to despawn, but only while they're loaded. So if you're far enough away, you actually still have time to go get your stuff. It might take you a little bit of time to find it, but that's okay. Also now, before you get too invested in this world, this is the time to decide whether or not you like it. Your main spawn area is something that you cannot change. It's where your friends will spawn in at, or where you will spawn if you don't have a bed, or if your bed gets destroyed. Minecraft worlds have such a huge variety of generation that there's no telling what you can discover, so be sure to find a world with a main spawn that you thoroughly enjoy. Your world will dramatically impact how you end up playing the game, even stuff like finding a bed. You know, maybe it's easy to find sheep on your world and maybe it's not. But if you do manage to find three wool of the same color, you can make a bed. Place down your crafting table, get three wooden planks and three wool of the same color in order to make your bed. Clicking on a bed sets your respawn point, and clicking on a bed at night will fast forward it to the morning time. You also don't need two beds, you only need one, I just like how two look. But if your bed is ever destroyed and you die, you won't respawn there, you'll respawn back at main spawn. So also, if you're having trouble dealing with monsters or figuring out where you are, there's a few settings to fix that. So instead of changing your default game setting from survival to creative, if you're having trouble with monsters, just change the difficulty. Switch it to peaceful. On peaceful, the only thing that happens is monsters just don't spawn. And if you're getting lost or having trouble getting around, this option right here that says show coordinates, I believe it's a bedrock only feature, but it makes your coordinates appear in the top left hand corner of your screen. Main spawn tends to be around 0, zero or really close to that, so this really helps you navigate. You know, if you're having trouble uh, remembering where your bases are or locating places of interest or getting back to main spawn, the show coordinates will definitely help. And so from here, it's up to you you know maybe you start collecting animals and become a rancher or maybe you become a vegetarian and start growing your food either way there's tons of different ways to actually play and interact with minecraft but the very beginning of the game is really similar usually it starts off by collecting food punching wood and getting some coal and we'll finish off this video touching on the game settings again. So the starting map and bonus chest really doesn't matter if it's on or off. And then all of these other options, they either turn off things that need to be in the game, or they turn on things that aren't really stable and haven't yet been added to the game. So out of all of them, all you should really pay attention to is the show coordinates. If you don't like it cluttering your screen, leave it off. If you like it because you want to know where you are, turn it on. Just ignore everything else. And that's all we got for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe for more adventures. I'm using this video as a starting point for a how to get better at Minecraft series. There's just so many different ways to play this game and so many different ways to improve. I had to start somewhere. So I tried to make it as simple as I possibly could. But until next time, I've been your host, Amledu, hopefully teaching you a Minecraft trick or two.